This is the solution to written homework six. It's quite similar to the solution to written homework five with the added twist that you'll need to uh, factor a cubic in order to answer the question. So the first step is to check the natural domain. So because f is a polynomial, the natural domain is all reals. There's no breaks in the natural domain. Two, we need to find the critical numbers. That is to say where the derivative is undefined or zero. So the derivative is x cubed minus 5x squared plus 7x minus 3. And then we, we just computed the derivative, so that means we need to check the domain. And because the derivative is a polynomial, that means that there's no change. So we want to factor this cubic and if you had access to something like Wolfram Alpha or a, or a algebra system then you could request it to factor this but you don't so <clears throat> here's the hint that x equal to 1 is a stationary point so what the hint is saying it's saying that if you plug in 1 to the derivative you should get 0 because it's a stationary point. We're going to use Horner's scheme to factor f. So if we evaluate uh, to, to factor the derivative of f. To, so we want to evaluate the derivative of f at 1. So 1, negative 5, 7, 3. So testing this. So 1 falls out, 1 com wants to come back in, so it has to pass through the door and get multiplied by 1. So negative 4, negative 4, 3, 3, oh, this should be, this should be a negative 3. Uh, so the 3 comes up here, and then we get a 0. So we were expecting to have a zero because that's what the hint said. As a result of this, we now know that the derivative factors as x minus 1 is one of the factors because when you evaluate at 1 you get zero and the other factor is x squared minus 4x plus 3. So this one factors as uh, two numbers whose product is 3 and whose sum is negative 4. How about negative 1 and negative 3? So this is the factorization of the derivative x minus 1 squared multiplied by x minus 3. So we can see that the stationary points of the derivative the stationary points of the function are exactly x is 1 and x is 3. So now we need to plot these points in a chart. So plotting these. So 
one and three. And now in each region, we need to select a test point. So how about zero, two, and four. And then we need to evaluate the derivative at each test point. So we'll evaluate this factored version of the derivative. So when we plug in zero, we get negative squared multiplied by negative. When we plug in two, we get positive squared multiplied by negative. And when we plug in four, we get positive squared multiplied by positive. And then the overall SIGN in each region. So negative squared is positive times another negative is negative. So negative slope. Positive squared is positive times negative is negative. So negative slope again. And then positive squared times positive is positive, so positive slope. So now we can make our conclusion. So 1 is not a local extremum, because the slope chart is saying that the function goes down and then continues to go down. So it is not a maximum, and it is not a minimum. However, 3 is a minimum. So local min x equal to 3, and local max none. That's the answer to the exercise. But if you're just interested in a function that could possibly do that, <clears throat> here is an example. So at, at 1, and 3, interesting things occur. <clears throat> so it slopes down to 1, gets flat, and then continues to slope down, and then comes to a minimum at 3, and then goes up. So there's a stationary point here with a horizontal tangent, and another stationary point here with a horizontal tangent. And that's the answer to the exercise.